Building a civilization in ancient times was hard. People had to tame wild rivers, protect themselves from sometimes unfriendly neighbors, and people had to work together to survive. And they did all of this without machines, computers, or even YouTube. Ancient people were capable of incredible things. The people of ancient China were no different. They created a thriving civilization and fascinating culture in the Yellow River Valley of China. The Yellow River Valley is one of the cradles of civilization. This valley contains the Yellow River, also called the Hong He. The Chinese sometimes refer to it as the Mother River because their culture was born here. It's called the Yellow River because it has a yellow-brown color due to the silt that flows in it. The people of the Yellow River Valley started out in separate villages, but legend has it they were united by a leader named Hong Di around 2700 BCE. He is known in tradition as the Yellow Emperor. Wang Di is credited with uniting the people of the valley, discovering medicine and using it to heal people, inventing many things like carts, bows and arrows, boats, and wooden houses. Clearly, this is one talented guy, but sadly, he is most likely a myth or a folk hero. We don't know very much about him or the rulers shortly after him because no written records from that period have ever been discovered. We only have stories that were passed down or perhaps created later. The Yellow River yearly flooding was great for depositing rich yellow silt on the land for growing crops. But it could be terrible too by destroying farmland and homes. For this reason, sometimes the Yellow River is called China's Sorrow. According to Chinese tradition, one of the first rulers of China, named Yu the Great, or Yu the Engineer, decided to solve this problem. He worked together with people all along the river valley to build canals, dams, and levees to control the flow of the river and stop the damaging floods. He was a role model for future rulers of China because of his tireless, selfless work to accomplish his goal which took 13 years and always put the needs of the people before his own. Some Chinese legends say that the Yellow Emperor and Yu the Great may have turned into dragons or had the help of dragons because in Chinese mythology, dragons have power over water like the monsoon rain and flooding. Dragons are also a symbol of the emperor and his strength and power for much of Chinese history. Once the floods were better controlled, Farming took off in ancient China. The yearly monsoon rains filled up the major rivers to bring water and silt onto the farmlands. They grew crops including wheat, barley, fruits, nuts, and rice. Rice was unique to this area because it had to grow in very wet soil. Egypt and Mesopotamia were too dry for this. The farmers also raised domestic animals like pigs, chickens, cows, and ducks. Another important product made in China was silk. According to legend, silk was discovered by Lei Zhu, the wife of the Yellow Emperor, Empress of China. She was sipping tea in her garden one day under a mulberry tree, and a silkworm cocoon fell into her tea. The warm tea loosened the threads of the cocoon, and she pulled off a string and decided to have it woven into fabric. Silk is made by boiling the cocoon of a silkworm to loosen the threads, and then unraveling the silk strings twisting them into thread, and weaving it into cloth. The Chinese started growing mulberry trees that the silkworms love, and then raising silkworms on them to later harvest their cocoons. This whole process was only known to the Chinese. It was a huge secret. This secret was kept by the Chinese for over 2,000 years. Can you imagine keeping anything secret for that long? Silk was an important commodity for trade because everyone loved the soft, durable silk fabric. In fact, so much silk trade between China and the lands west took place over thousands of years that the roads that connected the rest of the world to China were called the Silk Road. Around 1760 BCE, the first cities were being started in the Yellow River Valley under the rule of Emperor Hong. 
His family ruled in China for 500 years, creating the Shang Dynasty, the first dynasty documented by history. A dynasty is when the rule of a country is kept within the same family for a long period of time, usually father to son. During this time, the wealthy noble people owned the land and the farmers worked on the land and gave food to the noblemen. The noblemen provided protection to the farmers from invaders. The first writing was developed in China at this time. This early writing used pictographs to express ideas. It was carved into bones, turtle shells, or bronze. Over time, these pictographs were changed and standardized into characters. This led to the Chinese character-based writing system used today in China. A new dynasty called the Zhou Dynasty began around 1050 BCE. During this dynasty, control of the government was decentralized, and the land was divided into various states. This worked great for a while, but eventually these states started warring with each other to control more land and power. These wars lasted for 500 years. Eventually, one leader emerged over all of China, the first true emperor of a unified China, Qin Shi Wang, or Shi Wang Di. He was the first ruler of the Qin Dynasty. The Western name for China comes from his name. Once he had China all under his rule, Shi Wang Di didn't want any opposition. To achieve this, he moved all of the former state leaders and warlords to his capital to keep an eye on them. He melted their weapons and made statues out of them. He burned books that might make people want to rebel against him or go back to the old days of the Zhou dynasty. He killed anyone who talked of treason. He didn't want enemies from other places invading his country, so he started construction on a huge long wall to protect his country from outsiders. This is called the Great Wall of China. Most of the parts he built are no longer standing, but the Great Wall was started during his rule and expanded from then on. Shi Wang Di wanted to live and rule forever, so he tried to find magical waters that he could drink from to avoid death. But not surprisingly, he never found them. Once he realized that death was inevitable, he started planning for life after death. He also wanted to have great power in the afterlife, so he had a huge burial palace built with everything he would need after he died. He even had an entire army of clay soldiers, horses, and chariots built to guard the burial palace around 8,000 of them. These clay soldiers can be seen today. They are called the Terracotta Warriors. The rulers of China believed that they were given a special mandate from heaven, or the gods, to be in charge. In order to maintain this mandate, the ruler had to honor it and take care of his people and act good towards them to maintain their link between heaven and earth. When a new ruler took over, Often it was said that the former ruler had violated the mandate of heaven and therefore lost their right to rule. Shi Wang Di was a great example of a ruler that worked against the mandate of heaven by not caring properly for his people. He is reported to have died by drinking an elixir of mercury, thinking it would grant him eternal life. Big mistake. Families were very important in China. According to the culture, you are responsible for your family above everything else. There was also a great respect for elders and parents. This idea was called filial piety. Many generations would live together in one home, and everyone took care of their elders. Because of this, many Chinese worshipped their ancestors after they died. One of the most influential people in Chinese history is a teacher and philosopher named Confucius. He lived during the Zhou Dynasty. He passed on forgotten teachings of great teachers and thinkers from ancient times about the importance of relationships with family and others. Another important philosophy that influenced Chinese life was Taoism. Its followers believe in living a simple and balanced life. It also seeks to help its adherents find peace with nature and be selfless to others. This belief system is based on the writings of Lao Tzu, who is thought to have lived during the Zhou Dynasty. We'll discuss Confucianism and Taoism in more detail in a later video. The ancient Chinese civilization is a great example of a hard-working people that tamed a dangerous river to create a thriving civilization, all while honoring their elders and making family a priority. 
We hope you enjoyed this brief history of ancient China and that you learned some interesting things. Please help our channel grow by clicking the subscribe button and liking this video. As always, there are some links to additional learning resources. We hope to bring more fun history videos soon. See you next time!